no killing the dream. Genesis 37 from verse 5 to 11. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams, and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying. That's the King James Version. On a certain day when Jacob sent Joseph to visit his brothers in the fields where they were feeding their father's flock, we are told in Genesis chapter 37 from verse 18 to 20. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Again, that's the King James Version. As a result of the envy and hatred they had towards Joseph, and in a bid to stop his dreams from coming to pass, they thought of killing him. Eventually, though, they sold him into slavery and lied to their father that it looked like he had been torn to shreds by a wild animal. Unknown to Joseph's brothers, by selling him to strangers, they actually set him on the road to the fulfillment of his God-given dreams. We saw from the scriptures that God was with Joseph, ev Joseph every step of the way. God prospered him and gave him favor when he served Potiphar, who was an officer to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Even when Potiphar's evil wife lied against Joseph and the young man ended up being unjustly locked, God was with Joseph in prison. God so worked everything out that Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. A terrible famine came upon the whole world and in their search for food for their families, Joseph's brothers came in contact with, with him in Egypt. Without knowing that he was their brother against whom they had acted very wickedly, they bowed down to him a number of times, thereby fulfilling the dreams he had shared with them years before. God made many promises to us in the scriptures and he expects us to embrace and believe that every one of them will come to pass in our lives and homes. Every now and again, the Lord even speaks to us, giving us promises that are not among those clearly written in the Bible. For instance, God can tell a janitor that someday he will own an organization very similar to the one he's currently working for. The natural response when you hear something like that from God is to laugh like Sarah, Abraham's wife, did when she heard the Lord telling her husband that she would conceive and give birth to a son even though she was already very old. But what God wants us to do is simply believe that he's able to do what he says and that nothing is impossible for him to accomplish. According to Mark chapter 9 verse 23, everything is possible if a person believes. Now, because the devil always wants to prove that God is a liar and not to be trusted, because he wants to make us turn our backs to God and either forget about his promises or look for an unholy way of bringing his words to pass in our lives, he looks for how to fight against that promise we have received from the Lord. He may raise people who, consciously or unconsciously, will work hard to stop God's will from being done in our lives. For instance, the janitor who gets a promise from God that he will soon become a company owner may suddenly get fired from his job, not because of anything he did wrong, but because someone higher than him who has a relative that just arrived from the village decided to get rid of him and replace him with his relative. The sacked brother begins to frantically try to secure a similar job, but all his efforts fail. At this time, he has even forgotten about the promise he got from God. He finally decides to go into a market and begin to help shoppers carry their items from the market to their vehicles. And then one day he attends to someone who just takes an unusual liking to him and decides to 
get him something better and less stressful than what he's currently doing. This stranger introduces him to her husband and then one thing leads to another and the brother sees himself managing an organization by far bigger than the one <clears throat> where he had served as a jan janitor before he got fired unjustly. A lot of times what seems to be against us is actually working in our favor and people who are deliberately or inadvertently hurting us end up being those that God is using to get us to the place where the dreams he has given us will be fulfilled. Even if everything you are seeing and experiencing right now negates what God promised you, be patient. Keep faith and hope alive. Don't be bitter against God or man. Keep praying. Take any step the Holy Spirit asks you to. All things still work together for the good of those who love God. Romans 8.28 God will use anyone and anything, good or bad, to ensure that the dreams you got from him are fulfilled. May the Lord strengthen our faith in Jesus' name. Amen.